I'm like I load a shotgun to a flock full of geese Making sales in the staircase while I watch for the D's And now I'm focused on better living and laughing at the fecus way before a rap beat My face is on the rap sheet It's the sole vocal terrorist I'm here to break the news again You know I'm the elephant in every single room I'm in I've been doing this for the love and I was lucrative These guys doubted me and now I'm wanted like a fugitive The special breed stop thinking you can't bleed You guys can't compare your style equivalent to special needs Feudal got the trophy, y'all just fighting for second seed And forget it, hit man against me, death is guaranteed I went from college plans to accumulating fans Used to back up the grams and did a few bank scams Illegal activities, often part of my plans But you'll never gain a reward if you avoid taking the chance I often sit and wonder if y'all are worth the effort Y'all jokers are Jared Leto, next to Heath Ledger Two options, crack or form a diamond under pressure I hear the birds chirping, I have to ruffle some feathers and I still persevered in the harshest location with home visits and drug tests from probation. I couldn't slip up. My PO was patiently waiting, trying to send me to the same prisons my uncle had stayed in and I couldn't fathom it. This high school graduate fell into a pit that sadly wasn't Lazarus. Moms grew me in the courtroom. It was embarrassing. I seen her praying so much. She almost brought the pastor in. No academic or no basketball scholarship, but I owed us to my mama for all the broken promises i'm still breaking barriers when they try to box me in they doubted the effort now they over there copying i'm like a lost diamond you could find me in the dirt you was gonna throw me in the water till you find them when i'm worth and i've been this way since birth had to visualize it first and i got the type of blessings i couldn't pray about in church i remember those winners why i didn't have a coat just a jacket and some sneakers i was praying it didn't snow but my stomach rumbling ribs touching i'm on the go and they toss some little bread, but my ambition for the loaf. My thoughts often clouded. This mic is for ventilation. And my fam is God praising, but Shogun was hella adjacent. Built my character from all the issues I was faced with. Now I'm at the dinner table. Success is what I'm craving. So, everything futile, man. You know what it is. Shout out to Kickback and Chill. Yes, sir. What's up guys, welcome to Kick Back and Chill. I'm your host Dan YC and we the only show where you can kick back, relax, and have some fun on this Friday afternoon in Midtown, New York City. I'm super excited, I'm pumped up because this guy that just killed the stage in the beginning of the show just performed this record, The Wind From Within, off the new album Project Delta. Y'all show some love for Grandmaster Shogun. Yes, sir. Yo, yo, yo. You just killed the stage and stuff, man. You know <laughs> Good to it. see you, man. Likewise, have brother. a seat, have a seat. It's been a long time coming for this one. Oh, man. Grand Master Shogun. Indeed in the flesh. Oh, man. Well, how are you feeling today? I feel good, man. You know, blessed to be here. Thank, Thank you for, you for stopping me for by real. the function. Well, thanks for being here at the function. Thank you. Now, what people don't know is that we met um, from Crossover Party. Major shout Facts. out to Jock and the, major, and the rest of the crew. Yeah. Um, that's how we was able to uh, start our friendship. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely. New Crossover. album. Yeah. Project Delta. Charles, it's out now, man. It's been out for a couple of months, man. But before we really get into the album, I kind of want to take it all the way back to where it first started. Like, what was it about music that made you say, you know what, this is what I want to pursue as a career? Well, uh, I've always wrote music. I've always wrote poetry. Even in middle school, I played saxophone. I used to write sheet music when I was a kid. Like, mm. I don't know, music has been a big part of my life. Just specifically hip-hop and rap, I feel like the uh, that's like the soundtrack to my life. Seeing as how, like, people who are... <clears throat> from the same demographic as me and you know grow up in the same situations often and how i can relate to them so i figured why not do that in my own way tell my own story so i feel like that's where my influence comes so from. so poetry was like the gateway yeah poetry was definitely the gateway definitely books like um what's the name of the tupac book uh, a rose that grew from the concrete like a book yes, like that everybody's familiar with that, yeah, yeah definitely i wrote, read books like that all the time even even in uh, like regular books, like novels, like Man Child in the Promised Land by Claude Brown. Like I read that book at like 12 and just mm -hmm. how descriptive and how tra um, transparent he was throughout that story like resonated with me. Even now it does. Mm, okay, cool, cool. So being that you say you write, yes. you know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, 
Songwriters are really hitting the ground, you know, with the behind the scenes for, for a lot of major records. Can we see you slowly blend into that, or you feel like you just want to stick to being on camera and being on the scenes? I think, uh... Being that, you know, writing part. You know, I think I could be a songwriter. You know, it's funny, someone asked me this question before, too, I'm not going to lie. But mm -hmm. I definitely think uh, I would want to do a song, like, writing, you know, venture in the future. Um, it would just have to be for a certain artist, though. You know, I want to be able to, of course... Write for like a plug, you know, yeah, yeah write for a, a few different genres, if you will. Mm -hmm. But it all depends on who the artist is and what's the like the direction they're going. Because I just don't want to use my talent to write whatever. You know what I'm saying? You want to have like strictly for like a specific artist. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? So being that you say that, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of artists in the game that you idolize, right? Of course. Who do you feel like you can be able to that you would that you want to do a feature with? Or being that we talked about songwriting, I'm sorry to throw you on the spot. <laughs> who would you want to? Um, do a do songwriting for or do a feature with in this industry? And you like, yo, he gotta be on my next project. I gotta mm, that. I, you know, I said this a while ago. Actually, a feature I want to do is with my friends. Her name is Sophie. Sophie said she's an immensely talented singer. Um, she's also a really good vocal coach. And okay. someone I could see myself writing for. Um, Hmm, that's that's, hard, a, that's so. a really good question. I never <laughs> I never thought about that. Like, who would I write for? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's crazy, but. Honestly, I think, man, probably one of my friends, I think, like, honestly. Like, That's love. Yeah. I think so. Like, I would write for my friend Ishe. Mm -hmm. I think, well, I think she's a really good writer, like, on her own. But I think that if I wrote something for her, it'd be, like, it'd be really funny to see her take that approach on how I approach songs as well. So, yeah, I think that was something I'd be doing. Okay, cool. You know, as an independent artist, you know, there's always that question that remains. Should I sign to a major record label or should I remain independent? Yeah. There's pros and cons to both, though. Yeah, so definitely. I kind of want to hear your take on but what, how you want, how you want to maneuver, you know, with that as you navigate through the industry. Um, being independent, of course, you know, is a bunch of uh, pros. You know, control your own stuff. You know, you make all the royalties, make all the money, but you lack exposure. You lack that platform. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless you have a really big following. That coming, the record label you know what can I'm saying? give you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you know, exactly. And um, having a label is good. I feel like, and I, this is another one too, another conversation I'll have with somebody. I feel like labels, what they do now is they target people who are kind of like in crappy situations, you know what I'm saying? And just, like, I remember Scarlett was talking about this like one time on Complex. She was like, yo, like this label tried to offer me X amount of money mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Y'all make billions and billions of dollars off of all these other artists. You want to offer me this small, minuscule amount. So I feel like it depends. There's pros and cons to both, but I feel like if you are going to sign to a label, you need to be in the financial position to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, give the money back to the label when they give you that investment. Or you so need to... So someone like a bank, you know, loan you know, money. Or yeah, not yeah. even just a bank, a big following. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's say if um, Ice Spice is a, an example, you know what I'm saying? She has a big following. She had a big following off of one song. She owns her master's. Creative control, yeah, She's killing the game. Creative control, hundred percent hers. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like stipulation like that. You know, if you were in control creatively, you know, that would be like a reason for you to sign to a label. That's the first thing I feel like. Yeah. If I were to sign, I need to be in control of my stuff, my art. So like a distribution deal in a sense. Yeah, precisely, mm -hmm. precisely. Okay, cool, cool. You know, um, in this industry, you know, well, before social media was like a huge thing. Yeah. The, the artists we idolized, they didn't really have to go down the route of having a well, a huge following, having yeah. brand awareness, you know, things of that nature. Um, how do you feel like this industry would have been if social media didn't exist? Do you feel like more people would have been exposed, like, and more artists would have been developed? I kind of want to hear your take on that. Uh, I think if there's no social media, there's a lack of accessibility. I'm, oh, I'm yeah, not going to lie. Just because how easy everything is now with TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera how easy it is for people to discover new songs, especially TikTok. Like, if you want to discover some new stuff, go directly over there. But I feel like all the trends and things that people do now uh, that are inspired throughout social media and meme culture, it wouldn't be as popular as, the, as it is now. Um, for certain artists, you know, come up through, you know, the hard way, you know, just kind of be good, word of mouth, whatever the case may be. I mean, that's always an uphill battle. Regardless, but I feel like for the people who are heavily invested in, you know, their music and social media, i.e., like I said, Instagram and TikTok, it'll be a, a lot harder, you know what I'm saying, to break the service, you know, with that type of stuff that's going on. Okay, cool. You know, how long have you been doing music? 
Uh, I have been, I have been rapping like, well, recording officially since maybe I want to say 2017. So about six years. So about six years. Okay, perfect, perfect. So this goes back. This goes perfectly with my question. You know, as you continue, as the years go on, you continue to make music. You're identifying your strengths. You're identifying your weaknesses, right? Definitely. As you work with other artists, you know, you know, from other networking events, venues, and so much more. Um, when do you feel like a person should charge other fellow artists from a verse and or hook? When uh, do you feel like it's that time? I feel like it's whenever you feel like you're ready. Like me, I don't like my friends. They everybody know everybody that I work with. All my friends, they get features for free. Like I just don't see it. Like I'm just creating with my friends, mm. and we just try to put out good stuff. But if it's really like a business venture, like a that type of relationship with another mm. artist, then I feel like. You know, it just depends on who you are at the end of the day. Yeah. Like me, I don't charge everybody for features, but if I if I don't know you and you refer And you feel to like the work the, the level of playing field is not there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. So I just I don't know. Like I said, it all depends on who the person is. I know people who charge for features. Like mm -hmm. I know people who wanna charge me for features though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it all depends. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. You know, venues are like the number one thing for artists to get a, a major exposure, yeah. like major brand awareness, right? What was the first um, venue you performed at, and how was that experience like? Being that you know you've been doing music for six years. First venue I performed at. Damn. Um, I want to say the first time I remember stepping behind a mic and okay. in front of yeah. a whole bunch of people that were in the room. I want to say. I want to say early 2017. I want to say that because that's like I didn't open mic in Queens mm -hmm. back then, but I didn't start performing on stages and in venues till maybe maybe two years ago. To be honest with you, on it, yeah, like two years ago is when I started performing, performing. But when I first started, it was strictly just freestyle sessions with my friends, uh, poetry open mics, and maybe a cipher here and there, but jumping on stages that I just started doing that a few years ago. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's talk about this album, Project mm -hmm. Delta. I'm right. loving the cover art. Thank you. Um, shout out to my baby Joe for the cover art. Baby Joe, maybe shout out to her, man. She came to the function as well, so maybe shout out to her, man. Yeah. Yo, talk about that album process. You know, I seen you had a few features on there. I'm assuming those are your friends. Talk about that creative process, and Fresh. was it hard creating this artwork? Um, The artwork? No, not really. Honestly, like when I take when I do album artwork, it's just it's like the best looking picture in my phone gallery, yeah, and yeah. I favorite it, and I just add like a parental advisory sticker on it. But for this one, um, it's funny because me and Joe, we were in Queens. The pronouns are they them, by the way. I just want to yeah. point that out. Um, we were in Queens, and we did another. Well, they did a photo shoot for their friend Justine, who was another talented photographer. Uh, we took pictures of her, and then. I don't know, I had my hoodie on, I had my coat on, and I was like, babe. You was chilling, you was in a vibe. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. bobbing, you know what I'm saying? I had the hoodie on, I, told, I was like, yo, babe, take a picture of me. And then Joe was like, I'm not gonna be able to see your face, and I'm like, that's the point, though. So when I seen the picture, I was like, okay, I like this, you know, but yeah. what, where, does it, where does it lead to? You know, I'm like, it's mm -hmm. mysterious, mm -hmm. I guess, you know? And I'm like, Project Delta, and I'm like, what does that sound to you? Um, Joe was like, it sounds like a mysterious government program you know that's been locked away for hundreds of years i guess so i guess Ooh. this uh this project is like the culmination of me working so hard secretly for the last few months and like i don't know if you see my instagram the raw footage yes like the, like those last six videos i have are not even remotely close to all the sessions i've had for recording the album like i've had like dozens more and a whole bunch of other songs that didn't make the cut mm. which is crazy but yeah wow Major yeah. shout out to Joe. Damn, that, yeah. that's I like that. I like yeah. the, <laughs> the story behind Project Delta because that was really about to be my next question. Like, why the name? But like, it's very secretive and mis. I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. You know, outside of um, outside of music, you also play basketball. That's how we met. You know, through the facts, crossover facts, property, facts. nonprofit organization with Jock and them. You know, I'm just curious. You know, um, how has just the crossover project shape you into the man you are today or even just as an artist? Mm, well, I think basketball for sure, well, in general has like taught me discipline and accountability as well, just like as a human being. Cause I feel like, I always use this one example, like let's say you're playing basketball and you turn the ball over. Let's say you throw a bad pass, goes out of bounds. That's my fault, feel me? That's accountability right then and there. Um, discipline, when you're doing like drills with your coach, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of like having the ability to stay on task 
all the time. That's a, that's something I've learned from being around people in crossover project or just playing ball under the whistle in general. Mm -hmm. But I feel like crossover project has taught me the value of like friendships because you know although I don't talk to everybody from crossover project, but I still have those relationships I maintain with people like my boy Albert Reese, uh, my brother Tremaine, obviously you and a whole bunch of other people as well. But yeah, Crossover Project is definitely detrimental in my, my upbringing, especially as an artist. Well, bro, listen, I can't just have you lead a function, man, and not perform one more time. Can you bless us? You gotta of bless course. the audience one more time. I got you, I got you. Yes, got sir, you. yes, sir, I can't wait. So my guy, Grandmaster Shogun, is about to hit the stage one more time and bless, us, and bless the audience with some good music. So keep it locked and stay tuned.